This video is presented by Pop Culture Zone and PopCultureZone.com. We all know the key to graded books is getting those books cleaned and pressed. And with over 8,000 books cleaned and pressed in the last year alone, and that low, low price of $5.99, Pop Culture Zone is the place to go before you get your books graded. So to find out more, head to PopCultureZone.com. What's going on, guys? It is Brian and Jack with Superman's Comics. We got a big week. We have San Diego Comic-Con at home this coming weekend. But before we get to any of that, we're going to talk about three up, three down. That's right. We're coming at you with three hot and three cold comic book market trends each and every week. We're going to get right into it right now, starting with those three up portion. And the first one we're going to talk about is Strange Academy. This title has been going nuclear over the past couple weeks. That's right. Issue number one is on fire. All covers, incentives, retailer exclusives. Um, and then we're seeing the second print dropping this week. A lot of heat on that. I think Yeah, there was see- pre-sales listed for like $24. Yeah, I think you're going to see us talk about that in other shows this week. And on top of that, issue number two is doing incredible. And it's not a first appearance, really just a, a reader buzz, second appearance. Um, there's no reason to think that we're not going to see that continue for three, four This is a major title to be on the lookout for uh, because it's hitting multiple categories. Yeah, and it's crazy. I don't understand why the prices are doing the way that they're doing, but it's like Metallica says, man, ride the lightning. But we're getting into the next one on the three-up portion, and we're going back to Boom once again. We've talked about a bunch of their titles, especially this one. We're talking about something that's killing the children. You have late prints, but I say not only late prints, the whole series is hot. But yes, specifically the later printings. Well, yeah. So the whole series is on fire, right? Issue number one, the first print, doing about 100 bucks. We could talk about the Frizen cover. We could talk about every cover. We could talk about retailer exclusives. We could talk about that at all. But the thing that I really want to note is those late prints, Brian, because I don't think people are aware just what they're doing. And it's beyond issue number one. All of the publicity around late prints All of the defending that we had to do of those late prints was surrounding issue number one, and it's, I think, eight subsequent printings. But if you go and look at what issue number three, four, five are doing in the third print, fourth print, a lot of these print ones are extremely low. If you want to learn more about this, follow Ross Ritchie, who is the Boom CEO on Instagram. He has outlined the top five lowest printed books from this series. Then go look at what eBay sold listings are on this book. In- incredible prices. Every sale is toppling the one before with recent sales going as high as $120. Uh, really incredible for books that are just low print, but really just reader buzz on a series that has undeniable momentum. Yeah, there's no doubt we've been big fans of this. And we always say, if you've read this and you didn't like it, let us know because we haven't found a person yet that did not enjoy this book. But with that, we're going to get into the last one in the three-up portion. We're talking about one that a lot of people in the comic community are talking about. So it definitely deserves to be here on the three-up portion. We're talking Batman Beyond in DC continuity. There's a bunch of stuff circulating about this, right? Yeah, this was the most demanded to be talked about um, topic for us this week. Uh, This is definitely what people wanted to hear um, us discuss. And I think it's important before we discuss this to really say that Like when we discuss these topics, we try to give you the facts and then we give you our opinion. Um, But ultimately, we want to know what your opinion is. So I want to hear in the comments section what you guys think of this whole situation. Where do you guys feel like the keys are in the books that we're going to talk about? But everyone knows about Batman Beyond, number one, long being the the first appearance of Batman Beyond and of Terry McGinnis is the key. We've talked about it on several programs on the show. It's definitely a book to make sure that you get it's rising in value fast. But there's always been a second book of value, and that is that Batman Superman annual um, that is got that great art germ cover. There's the, set, the second print in red, um, and it's always been dubbed the first appearance of Batman Beyond in DC continuity. And that has recently been challenged by some members of the comic community who have done some research and some homeworks, read some books, found some interesting things, and they presented them to the public. Um, 
there are some Instagram members. Uh, I, I probably am going to omit a few names because I know that there was a group of people who did it, but Batcave Comics on Instagram, um, as well as Strange Blade, um, and their whole entire Yancey Street syndicate really kind of contributed to this. But they discovered that in Batman Superman 22 and in 23, um, there is a instance where they go to uh, Earth-12 in part of DC continuity, and they meet up with Batman Beyond. Um, so without a doubt, here's the first thing that's important to note, Brian, is that the, the Batman Superman annual is always called the first appearance of Batman Beyond in DC continuity. Right off the bat, it's no longer the first appearance of Batman Beyond in DC continuity, regardless of who is wearing the costume, because he does show up right there in in 22 and 23 um and that happens five years before the annual the other thing and the thing that really makes this complicated is that on a call with bruce wayne batman beyond is referred to as tim now the tim that most would assume would be tim drake and that is also kind of corroborated in the fact that there is a dc direct action figure that went along with this comic series for Batman Beyond. And on the back of the figure, in a little description of the figure, it describes the character as Tim Drake. So this has led others to argue that, no, this is Tim Drake as Batman Beyond, so it's not Terry McGinnis. Now, again, as I said, it's still Batman Beyond in DC continuity, but it would allow the annual to still be the first appearance of Terry McGinnis in continuity. Then that's allowed others to take a larger look at the the uh, annual itself, and then others are now arguing that the book does not um, really happen in continuity. It's really kind of an Elseworld story within the Batman Beyond universe that just so happens to happen within a title. And I think really it's an example of what we've talked about, Brian, where cover art really influences a lot of these decisions and the fact that that art germ cover art is there. Now, it would be you know, we can't omit the, the kind of elephant in the room that this has gotten very negative on social media. Um, the key collector has made a couple different changes. There's been a couple different edits to their database as some of this news has, has kind of broken. And the group that initially did the research has taken offense to that. And that has caused some strife on social media, which is certainly what largely people are talking about. Now we want to talk about the books more than we want to talk about um, the beef. And I, I still want to commend the, those who were able to do the research. I think that research is, is extremely important. And, but it's important to note that, you know, this is happening. And, you know, I don't know how you feel about it, Brian, but I, I really feel like, and, I, and and all those out there, um, I feel like when it's tough sometimes in the comic community to be able to make a discovery like this, because you're immediately getting accusations of um, pump and dump or, um, you know, n some nefarious plot that it, it, it may not be, these guys seem to be just be collectors who have come upon this and wanted to share it with the community. Um, now, they're, the way they've handled uh, the offense from Key Collector, that's, I mean, that's different, but certainly I've thrown a few petty parties myself, so I'm not really one to uh, judge another person. But, you know, it, 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 the topic of whether or not this is a valid appearance is a messy one. So that's where I'm saying it's important for the community. Now, backing up the claim that this is Terry McGinnis and not Tim Drake is the fact that apparently at a WonderCon panel a few years later, DC walked back ca the calling of um, Batman Beyond Tim, saying that it was a mistake. It was supposed to be Terry. And that would mean that the action figure line, which wasn't produced by DC, was just taking information from the series. This is further backed up by the fact that the Batman Encyclopedia, which is a book that was commissioned by DC, also acknowledges Batman Beyond's first appearance in continuity coming in 22 and 23, as well as the DC encyclopedia that exists online, DC fandom. So all of these uh, sources acknowledge that that's Terry McGinnis and that a mistake was made to call him Tim. But the reality is the mistake was still made. So what we as a comic community, since the market ultimately decides, have to decide is, does the mistake 
and the knowledge of the mistake, we can argue whether the mistake is valid or not, but does that make that Tim or does that make that Terry? Does the mistake count or does the mistake not count? Um, and that is what ultimately, when we say the market decides, the market has to decide. Now, there's other players in this. We've seen Topher, who's another researcher who's done a great job uncovering a lot of information. He put out an article on comicbookinvest.com that goes into this whole topic. Um, and he brings up another book, which that book's been debated whether that character is even Batman Beyond or whether or not this is a complete Elseworld story that's from Grant Morrison. Um, but it's, it's difficult because everybody's trying to stake their claim on this book. And while Tover writes for comicbookinvest.com, he is also a paid contributor of the Key Collector app who had, again, is now in this uh, different side battle where I think it's important that mostly um, what I would like to see is people report on the news rather than give their opinion on it. Um, and that's what like platforms like YouTube where people come here and they want to hear our opinion on it. For me personally, it's the messiest, one of the messiest first appearances I've ever seen. Um, so I, I don't even know where I sit. Um, I'd love to hear where you sit on it, Brian. I don't think you do because, to be honest, I don't care. I, and that's not to take anything away from all the research that's been done, the collectors that have done everything. I understand that. And, and I've done stuff like that with other characters where that's part of the fun of collecting is you start going down a rabbit hole and you start looking stuff up and you start finding more and you start pulling the thread on things. You start opening up stuff that could mean a lot of stuff. And, of course, when you open up, that opens up speculation and then everyone starts going rampant about it. Right. I always say buy what you like. I like Batman Beyond number one. That was the comic that I've always wanted. That's the one I picked up a few years ago and the free comic book day edition. I didn't care about the other books. So that's why I say I don't care. Um, I just don't have the energy or the time to go through all that, try to chase books. I, I'm done chasing books. I don't chase books anymore. If I, Once they've reached that, that level of outside of my budget, I don't go after them unless it's something that's like near and dear to my heart after doing this for years you've been burned a few times and you start chasing those books and then afterwards you're like man why did i spend all that effort chasing books so that's why i say i don't care that's just my opinion i'm not taking away from anything of research i've done or any of the information that's out there it's just i'm not as interested in the batman beyond mythos as a lot of the comic book community is i guess you could say. well i also think it's it's searching for another key right because i think if i if i was to say what you said in a different way i would say that ultimately the first appearance is the real book that you should want. All of this is trying to find a secondary book and it's all kind of left into a gray area to argue and to debate. Um, and ultimately uh, we're seeing books spike, right? So Batman uh, Superman 22 is on fire. It's gone. We've seen sales as high as $90. Um, and that is people deciding, but now to transition to the down portion, this topic has been kind of so involved and so big, it's going to take up two segments. But it's also where I want to talk about, because we're talking about the way that some of these books are spiking as a result, it's also a downward trend to kind of point out and pick on where these prices are spiking because ultimately people are making their own decisions, right? And it's why you have to do your own research. We talk about that on a regular basis. If we're ultimately basing our decisions upon what some person on Instagram says, what some person on YouTube says, and by the way, that includes myself. If we're deciding based on what some app says, then ultimately the you just end up being a slave to the market and, and these kind of things can happen. So, uh, a lot of great information was shared. I learned more about Batman Beyond this weekend than I have ever known or cared to know. But ultimately, it gets to be my decision to decide which books I want to add to my collection. And as an investment, which books I deem plausible for an investment. And I tend to stand uh, for my opinion where you sit, where I think it just makes me all double down on the importance of Batman Beyond number one. I think that's the book to grab. But uh, you know, to each his own. And I don't blame anyone who's still stuck on Super Batman, Superman annual um, that loves that book. The cover's amazing. And I, and I don't fault anyone who looks at this as one of the best uh, 
kind of discoveries in modern comics that we've had in the last couple of years because it, it, it definitely was out of left field and caught a lot of people off guard. So I want to say shout out to the people who discovered it and uh, let us, again, let us know in the comments section where you guys sit on this whole thing. Take all the, the, the players out of it and then, and just look at the books and the, in the issue at hand and how, where do you guys sit? What is, what is that first appearance of Terry McGinnis and Batman Beyond in DC continuity? Yeah, and I think Amazon must have took notice too because just like yesterday or two days ago, they had the whole Batman Beyond animated series as the deal of the day for like 48 bucks on Blu-ray. So uh, <laughs> definitely hot and cold within the Batman Beyond. Yes. Uh, I think we went beyond Batman Beyond, but it's good stuff. And that's what's in the comic community. And like I said, that was just my opinion about, hey, I'm, I'm – not that hyped on Batman Beyond past this issue one and the newer series. I just don't go chasing those other keys, but I don't take anything away from the fans that do, the collectors that do, and the research that was done, I think. Edwin does hard work on that part. And like you said, do your research. Don't just trust anything. But I think that's the nature of, especially if you're talking about secondary market and speculator, everything's first to market, right? So you get first the news. You, you Sometimes you just buy it because you don't want to miss out on something. So you want to get it as quick as possible. And then afterwards you get find out Maybe just didn't hold up, but those are life lessons. I've learned from them. Definitely learned from them. Been there, done that. But that gets us to the next one on the three down portion. And we are talking about that new Robert Kirkman firepower. Firepower. Yeah. Now this is a series. This is the buying opportunity section um, of this show, because this is a series that everybody that's reading is just raving about uh again the first issue came out it was like a free comic book day issue um they also put out the original graphic novel now you're getting issue number two coming issue number two is mostly being bought because and it's going to be readily available on shelves i don't think it's going to be hard to get because it's essentially an incentive tied to the negan lives number one second print for every 10 copies of firepower you order you can order 10 copies of Negan lives you have to order well you have to order at least 10 copies of firepower and then you can get the same copies of Negan lives the second print as you do firepower so a lot of stores are gonna because you're getting a two for one and one of them being uh, a walking dead Negan book that was previously sold out you're gonna see people load up on firepower number two it's not necessarily gonna move beyond the reader buzz but this is Kirkman's current big project. I've seen a number of interviews where he's talked very passionately about this project. He's kind of dialed in right now with some of his Hollywood relationships. Uh, Invincible is moving uh, quickly. Uh, Oblivion Song seems to be moving quickly. So we're going to see these pro projects come to, come to light. And he talked recently about how he's allowed Walking Dead to kind of do their own thing, and he's focusing on his next moves. And this is a book that has been kind of described as everything Iron Fist should be. So I look at this book and I say, you know, it's not getting attention right now. It's being kind of used in it as a tent pole with other, other promotional gimmicks. But Robert Kirkman's trying really hard to get you to read this book. That's what I see. I see a guy who gave away issue number one, who put a graphic novel out the same day to try to get you all a lot of information about these characters who is giving you issue number two and incentivizing stores as best he can to load up on this issue. So this is something to pay attention to. Robert Kirkman wants you to pay attention to it. And I think that that alone is something that we just cannot ignore. Yeah. And they just had that big old skybound expo and they were talking about it throughout some of those panels as yep. well, which if you want to go back and view some of those, it's up there on YouTube, it's up there on skybound's website, a whole bunch of great panels. And they were talking about this. So, um, and you don't know because if he's stressing the importance of it, I'm not saying it is or isn't, but Amazon does have that deal with skybound. Yep. But with that being said, we're getting into the last one on the three down portion and another trend, it's comic related, but it's not comic specific, but we're talking about lack of organization. This is the time of the year where organization becomes of vital importance. Now it's getting pushed back a bit because of all the situations surrounding the pandemic, but San Diego Comic-Con time is here. And because it's here, we know that there's gonna be a lot of information hitting you all over social media, all over your newsfeed, and books are gonna be spiking. 
the market is going to be reacting to this news, whether or not it's things that come out of Hall H, whether or not it's publishing moves coming in the next few months, uh, whether or not it's the latest casting news, whether it's your favorite indie option, there is going to be a plethora of news. A lot of companies have been holding back their nuggets of information, their biggest stories waiting on San Diego, and it is finally upon us. And one commonality we hear every year is, man, that book spiked, I couldn't find it, or I didn't realize I had it, or um, I wasn't ready. That is one of the things of paramount importance. As you get ready for San Diego Comic-Con in the next few days, if you've got some downtime, get those boxes, get those back issues ready. Make sure you've got your your properties that you know that are going to be talked about, that you anticipate being talked about, um, accessible, because you're going to see real-time price changes uh, happen faster than they normally would. Uh, we see it every time with San Diego. We see it every time with New York Comic Con. We see it every time with uh, D23. And speed is key. And hitting that window is absolutely key. We've talked about the spec cycle several times, and there are just few openings in that window. Now, you may decide this isn't the time to sell. You're holding long term. You're a collector. This isn't for you. I understand. But if you're looking to be a reseller, you're looking to resell, when, if an indie option is announced this weekend, there is going to be a short window to maximize your profits. If you're not ready, you're not going to be able to be successful. So get those boxes organized, get those books inventory. Now is a great time to be doing that. Yeah, and it used to be a lot easier when San Diego Comic-Con was really the, the main source. Now you have all these branches, what DC's yes. doing their own, what the expo they got going on. Um, you mentioned D23, D23 got canceled, but over the past year or two, Marvel releases like some of the, like the movie news at San Diego, but a lot of the Disney Plus stuff has been at D23. But either way, exactly what he said, you know there's going to be some news coming out. There's some new announcements. And it's going to be different, you know, because you're used to just following the the same organizations that post on articles on their sites will have that information, but now you also have the ability to experience it yourself where San Diego Comic-Con is all online this year, right? Right. But we know it's daunting. There are some 400 plus panels that range from one hour to three hours. There's so much information going on. It's hard to keep track of. So we want to do something to help out our Simplements Comics community and try to bring all of that information to you in a short condensed form. So we are going to be bringing you today at San Diego Comic-Con Highlights talking about all of the things that we see that happen and giving you kind of like those bullet point highlights of these are the things that you need to be knowing that we're going down at the convention today. If you're not able to catch the panels or if it's just too much information and that information overload hits. Yeah, so we're going to give you quick snippets, highlights that we found important, and then we're going to put those right up here on Superman's Comics YouTube channel. So make sure you're subscribed, click that bell notification yes. so you get notified when those videos drop. Also, make sure to check out supermanscomics.com, a bunch of great information up there, as well as our first exclusive variant, right? That's right. Seven Secrets, number one, the brand new series coming from Tom Taylor. Huge news going out about that series. Big numbers from Boom Studios. A lot of heat. Brian and I have read the first two issues. I am telling you, no salesman tactic. This book is going to be one of the most talked about books of the year. So do not sleep on it. But if you're looking for an exclusive variant, limited virgin print run to just 500 copies from heavyweight cover artist Jung Young Yoon. It is available now at simplemanscomics.com as well as the616comics.com. All right, with that being said, guys, this is Brian Jack with Superman's Comics. We'll see you guys in the next video.